Kimura Hashiv. Welcome back. This time we're going to have a go at painting the tartan design on our figure's miniskirt. It's a straightforward pattern but the scale of the model and small surface area of the skirt makes it a bit tricky to do cleanly. The smaller you make your boxes the harder it gets to paint but we should still be able to make it work. Start off mixing a bit of Chimera Magenta into some Chimera Thalo Blue. If you don't have these paints, just substitute any magenta and dark blue that you have in your collection. That's going to give us this dark violet colour. And we'll use that to paint a grid of boxes over the skirt. Now to create the grid, we'll first paint a horizontal line running around the circumference. And we'll position it so it's roughly a third down from the top edge. Notice I'm not trying to paint the whole line in one go. I just paint a little bit and then I turn the model and paint another small section. Try to be light with the brush so that you don't push down on the tip. You want to keep it sharp as you do this in order to keep them thin. Paint this on as neat as you can but don't be too worried if there's the odd few wobbles here and there. This is just going to be a guideline, you'll be painting over it so you can correct any imperfections as you go. Once you've done that, paint on another horizontal line, this time making it about halfway between your guideline and the bottom of the skirt. Again, trying to make this as neat as you can but not worrying too much about the odd mistake. The actual colour you're using here doesn't really matter. I prefer using something darker as it makes the boxes easier to see, plus it gives me the option to leave an outline around them if I want. However, if you prefer, you can use one of the colours from the actual design to save you some work. With that line in place, we can switch to painting a series of vertical lines around the skirt, making them roughly equally spaced so that we create a grid of boxes. Now luckily our design goes under the arm so we don't need to bother about how many boxes we create but if you're painting fabric that doesn't have a break like this you'll need to count one of the rows and make sure you have an even number. If you have an odd number your pattern is not going to work properly so just be careful with that. To continue we're going to mix up a fairly light pink this time by adding some scale colour white sands into a bit of the magenta. Once we have that, we're going to paint it in every other box along the bottom row of the grid. You can try and clean up any unevenness to your lines as you do this. I will be painting these lines out all together, but for now we'll just leave them in as it makes it easier to see where our boxes are. I'm also not worried about getting a solid coverage of the colour at this stage, I just want to make sure I get everything in the right place. If you think some of your boxes are too small compared to the rest, you can go outside the line slightly to widen them. So you can see the line is pretty messy there at the front, but we'll be able to fix that, so just ignore it for now. To continue, we'll keep that pink colour, and this time we'll do essentially the same thing, but along the top row of boxes. So painting every other row, making sure they line up with the boxes on the bottom one. Once you've done that, we'll need to make a new colour. So take some of your light pink and add a tiny amount of this Chimera Thalo Blue. If you find that darkens the paint too much, add a bit more white sands in to lighten it. You're looking to create a light pastel lilac tone, so you don't want it too dark. Once you have that, paint in all your boxes except the middle one in each blank column. So this can be a little confusing, so the way I do it is by simply painting all the empty boxes along the bottom row, like this. Then once that's done, I paint all the boxes in the middle row that have a pink box above and below them. And then I go back again and paint all the empty boxes along the top row. Then once I'm sure all the colours are in the right place, I go over them again with a slightly thicker consistency, making the colour nice and solid and expanding the boxes slightly so that I paint over any of the guidelines. To complete the pattern, we're going to take that original dark lining colour 
and we'll fill in the remaining blank boxes along the middle row. And you want to try to do this as neatly as you can. You may have to spend a bit of time just going back and forth with your three colours in order to get the edges of each box nice and clean. It can be a little frustrating sometimes, but it's worth taking the time here to make sure everything is neat and tidy. The neater you are, the better your final result is going to be. So you can see that one was a bit sloppy, but you can fix these mistakes quite easily. All you do is take some of your lilac colour and just paint over the ragged edges. Next, we're going to thin that same dark colour with a bit of water so it's slightly transparent. And we'll use that to paint on vertical lines down the centre of each column that has light pink boxes. In order to get these clean, try to paint them on in one single confident stroke. Painting lightly so that you're using the tip of the brush. If you miss a bit, you might have to do another layer. Uh, you want to try and avoid that as much as possible as it's hard to paint the line in the exact same spot multiple times. But if you do need another go, try keeping your hands in the same position and use the same brush motion each time. I find doing a few practice strokes in the air just above the surface helps quite a bit. So you do a few practice strokes, essentially painting the air, and then gradually lower the brush until it hits the surface. And if you do these fairly quickly, you'll get a straighter line. Alright, now for the hard bit. <laughs> we'll take some of this scale colour white sands and thin it down slightly with some water, so it's about a light layer consistency. Now we're going to use that to paint a horizontal line running across the centre of the middle row. And the difficulty here is that it's quite a long section, so you're not going to be able to paint a quick, neat line. Instead, you're going to have to paint a little bit at a time. And each time you're going to have to stop and reposition the model before painting another small section. So it becomes tricky to keep it consistent across the whole row because you're having to stop and start all the time. Just try and keep calm and make it as clean as you can manage. If you don't get it perfect, you can use your other colours to neaten it up in any spots where you get it hugely wrong. So don't panic if you make a bit of a mess of it. I don't get it perfect either here, as you'll see. So once you've done that, paint vertical lines down the center of the columns with the dark squares. Oops, there's a bit too thick at the top on that one, but that's all right. I'll just take that back off with a second brush. Then we can paint that line back in. So that's much better this time. All right, so this is the same idea as before when we painted in the dark lines. Try to do them in a single confident stroke so they go on nice and straight and just work your way around the skirt until you've finished every column. When that's complete, add a small dot of the white sands where the two lines intersect across the middle of the darker boxes. As a finishing touch, add a little blue into the darker colour and then thin it down to a glaze consistency with some water. Then you can use that to add some subtle shading to the fabric so that it's not quite so flat looking. Just pulling it into the areas where you would expect a shadow to be. So here between the legs for example. And again round here where it dips below the arm. You're going to need to do this over a few layers letting each one dry before applying a new one. Then just stop when you think it's dark enough. If you like, when you're doing this, you can use a second brush to draw the edge of the glaze back over the surface. That will help to fade out the shadow and ensure you don't get any stains when it dries. I think that's probably enough. We can always go back and add to it later if we feel it needs it. Alright troops, so that is how you paint a pretty effective pink tartan over quite a small surface.
I hope you give it a try. Thanks very much for your support and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye for now.